everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. And Ticket to Ride from Alan Moon and Days of Wonder is one of my favorite games ever made. As soon as it came out, I was in love with the game. I still really like it. They have made a ton of Ticket to Ride stuff. There are lots of maps, there are expansions for the game, and so I thought I would do a video where I would just rank everything from my least favorite to my most favorite of the Ticket to Ride stuff that's come out. So I have 19 things here. There's been slightly more than 19 things. There's a couple things that I'm not going to mention, like they made translucent trains and milk trains and, you know, minor just accessories for the game. There's also a lot of fan-based things out there. I will mention for my unofficial 20, they made an expansion for Poland. There's a Poland map out there, and in fact, this is map six and a half because it's not, it, didn't, it wasn't actually published by Days of Wonder, it was published by Rebel, I guess in conjunction with Days of Wonder. This is the only map I have not played yet. I have it, I'll get around to playing it at some point. So there you go, number 20. But 19, first of all, we have the DICE expansion for Ticket to Ride. Easily my least favorite thing for Ticket to Ride. Also, I think everyone's least favorite thing. I know a few people liked it, but essentially just got rid of the cards and instead you rolled DICE and you would connect routes that way. This made the game much faster and really just took Ticket to Ride out of Ticket to Ride. It was, if you just, if you thought Ticket to Ride was too long for whatever reason, just wanted to connect stuff on the board as quickly as possible, this would work. This just bombed, I don't think any, like I said, I don't, a few people out there liked it. I hated it. Um, this is my least favorite. This is the only thing on, well, it's not the only thing, but I actively dislike this one. Then we have Ticket to Ride, the card game. You may never have heard of this. Uh, it came out, of course, when Ticket to Ride's popular. It's, you know, the thing to make a card game version. This was more of a memory style game. And in fact, probably the biggest thing that hurt Ticket to Ride, the card game, was the name Ticket to Ride. This game might have done better had it been called something else because you were constantly trying to remember what was on the pile. It wasn't a bad game. I thought it was okay, but the ticket, it didn't feel like Ticket to Ride. Again, that's in some senses, that's good, right? It's a card game. It should feel different. But the reliance on memory, I think, turned a lot of people off from it. Then I got two mini expansions. I'm putting these together. The Mystery Train and the Orient Express. These just added a few cards, both the Ticket to Ride and the Ticket to Ride Europe. They're a pain. They were a pain to find for a while. They've been included in some versions of the game, so that's confusing. Don't worry about these. If you don't have them, not a big deal. Then there's Rails and Sales. This is the only big box version of Ticket to Ride that I was kind of meh on. Rails and Sales added ships besides trains. Sounded fantastic, a double-sided board. The problem with Rails and Sales is it added 30 to 45 minutes to the playtime, a much longer playtime. Ticket to Ride was pretty much a perfect length. This just made it too long. And while I like Ticket to Ride, this making it a longer, bigger game did not really work for me as well. Some people really enjoy this one, and it's a beautiful production, just not one that I enjoy as much. Then we got a lot of people's least favorite expansion, but I thought it was okay, and that's Alvin and Dexter adding in two monsters that could move around. Now, uh, I believe Alvin showed up later on, um, or was it Dexter? I forget. One of them showed up. The alien, I think it was Alvin, showed up later on in one of the other expansions where you could use him. But I just liked having these pieces. You go around and smash other people's trains or things. I would not recommend playing this very often. And that's why it's lower on my list because I thought it was funny, but it's not something I would play with very often. But it exists. All right. Ticket to Ride Germany. Now, Ticket to Ride Markland came out quite a few, long while ago. And in Germany, it came out, Ticket to Ride Germany. Well, the German version never came to America until just a few years ago. And this one here, I found okay. I, I like the Ticket to Ride, I like the German map. But this is a very different game than Marklin was, Ticket to Ride Marklin, which will be later on in the list. Uh, this one, you would get points for connecting different areas, um, some immediate points. I found it to be ho-hum compared to the rest of the maps. I didn't actually dislike playing this map. It was fine. It just wasn't as exciting for me. Then we have Ticket to Ride Europe. And in this spot, I'm also including the 1912 expansion, which you should get for Ticket to Ride Europe if you can. Ticket to Ride Europe is fine. And I know some people are going to go gasp, but it's so low on my personal list because this is one of the most highly regarded of all the Ticket to Rides. The only reason I put it lower on my list, I'll gladly play it, 
is because it is the least competitive. That because they included stations in this one, you could use other people's routes as part of your own to connect your tickets. It's the easiest one to play. There's the least competition in this. It's hardest to cut people off. And for some people, that's a good thing. I love that nasty competition in Ticket to Ride. That's why this one's lower on my list, but it's still good. Having the Europe map, this was the second game to come out after the original Ticket to Ride, and it was really well received and still enjoyed to this day. Then we got Ticket to Ride New York. Now, this is a 15-minute Ticket to Ride. I was like, can never happen. It did, and it was good. Um, Ticket to Ride New York, uh, a very short little game where you have it plays out pretty much the same as Ticket to Ride, but there's a few other ways to get points, or just one other way to get points in this game. Very small, very quick. You want to play Ticket to Ride on the go, this one works really well. Which leads me into the next one, which is Ticket to Ride London. I don't know. I mean, I put London higher than New York because it has the buses as opposed to the taxis. Um, New York used taxi pieces. London uses those double-decker buses. London also has points for having connected different uh, areas on the board. The way you get extra points in both is slightly different. I don't know which one's better. At any given point, I'll take one over the other. But I like them both, Ticket to Ride London and Ticket to Ride New York. Then we got Ticket to Ride First Journey. This is Ticket to Ride for kids, and I was so pleased. Now, you might say, Ticket to Ride is easy enough for kids to play. We're talking young kids. I can play Ticket to Ride with young kids, and they'll understand the collect cards, tournament for routes, and even maybe connecting the tickets. What they won't understand is when to do that, because the you know that Ticket to Ride could be a very in-your-face style game. And I just played Ticket to Ride with my uh, youngest daughters just a month or so ago, and one of them was quite upset when someone else blocked them. Uh, Ticket to Ride Journey does not have that. The, every, all the tickets are worth the same amount. You're just placing trains and connecting them on the board and working together. Really nice components. It's a great introductory game, period. Not even just Ticket to Ride, but just for kids in general. Then we have Ticket to Ride Netherlands. This was map pack number four. Some of the map packs had one map, some had two. I tend to prefer the ones with two because it's double the fun, right? But the Netherlands is not a bad one. This is a more in-your-face style game than the other, uh, in-your-face style map than the other ones were. But it's a very enjoyable map. But of all the different map packs, it's the last one I would get, partially because there's just one. Then Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries. This is a full box version. This is in a map pack. So this comes with different trains. Uh, I, I think this one has does not go up to five players. I want to say it's only two or three players. Um, I remember it has purple trains, which was one of the things. I remember when it first came out, it was not available in America, and people went berserk. I want my Nordic countries, Nordic countries, and finally Days of Wonder brought it over so we could get it. I was trying to find a German copy myself. There's nothing really special about this one in particular, except that it does have some pretty cool long routes on it. And if you like the Nordic countries, this map works really well. Then we have map pack number three, Heart of Africa. Tickets Ride Africa. This is, I think, the meanest map that exists. What's interesting about this map is all the colors are in different sections of the board. So if I get green trains, I know where I'm building. It's on this section down here. But wow, I've never played a meaner map. I tend to like meanness. This one's really entertaining. <laughs> so if you want that in-your-face competition, you'll, you'll like this one. Again, though, unfortunately, I felt like this one slightly is down from the other ones because there's only one map in the map pack rather than two. So let's move to one that does have two, map pack number two, India and Switzerland. Now, Switzerland had originally been released, I think, on the... Uh, uh, computer version, which by the way is not on my list. The computer version and the iPad version to this game are fantastic. I highly recommend it. Switzerland is another small one. It's one of the best maps for two players, I think. Just really works back and forth. And India was giving you routes for making like circles of trains, which is a fascinating idea. India is probably the second meanest map that's out there. Not that Switzerland's much better. Um, but I like both of these. They both felt different and unique. Then we have France and the Old West. This is, I think, the newest or one of the newest map packs that has come out. 
Uh, France was fascinating because the colors on many of the lines weren't filled in. So when you, if you're going to build one, you decided the color that connected those tracks. That's fascinating. The Old West is the one I mentioned that came with the uh, the alien, the monster, if you want to play with that one. And it also had you picking different destinations on the thing. They're really solid, both of these. And we've also played both these live, I believe, on the Dice Towers. You can go back and look at them. I really like these, these two maps. But even more than that, map pack number one, which was Asia and Legendary Asia. Uh, this one, I... I like the Asia map, it's really fun, but Legendary Asia is where it's at. This is a team-based map where you have a partner, and this can be like the six players actually, and you are working together to connect stuff, but you can't really communicate about what you're doing other than in how you play, which can be very frustrating for some people, but I found it to be extremely fun. Also, the Asia map, like I said, it was interesting, the mountains, going through the mountains, and this was... When, I, when they first said, hey, there's a team version of Ticket to Ride, I said, it can't work. I really need to stop saying that with Ticket to Ride, but it did, and I really enjoyed it. Just slightly above that is the J Japan Italy maps. This is map pack number seven. This is the one that just came out. And I just realized I actually do have 20 things on my list. I just can't count. Um, but J the Italy map I thought was okay. It is a map, it is a pretty interesting map with fairies, but you also need to control stuff. I thought the map was hard to read, but the Japan map is so amazing, it brings it higher up on this list. The Japan map, where you can play these high-speed trains and everyone can use them to connect, it's actually one of the least confrontational maps in that way. There's still confrontation that can happen on it, but that singular high-speed train that goes through the map of Japan, and it focuses up on areas on the board, zooms in to Tokyo itself and stuff. It's fascinating. I really like this one. It just came out. You, you may not have seen this one. I recommend it highly. Then, up to number three, we have USA, the original map, along with its expansion, 1910. Now, in this category, I'm also throwing the 10th Anniversary Edition, which was a beautiful one, but you don't need to get. And they made this the 15th Anniversary Edition of this with the transitals and trains. It's the same map. This is the classic, the original, the one that I played the most of for sure, which is one of the reasons it's so high on my list. I love this map. I know the nooks and crannies of it. 1910 expansion helped it a lot by adding more routes and bigger cards. That doesn't hurt. Um, it scales, I mean, a two-player game and so different than a four-player game in this. Uh, nostalgia, but I, this map doesn't get old for me. 15 years later, I'm still enjoying it. I'll still gladly teach it to people for the first time. The classic fantastic the usa map the original number two is pennsylvania slash uk this was map pack number five i really like both these maps combined it's my favorite two maps uk is the most interesting map in the game probably because in this game you can only build two trains and you can only build in a certain area on the board and then you use cards to buy technologies so now I can build longer trains, and now I can go to this section, and now I get these. You buy these technologies that give you special abilities. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for beginner players, but it is a solid map. On the other side is Pennsylvania, which is one of the easiest maps to play, but every time you connect two trains on the board, you get shares, and at the end of the game, you get points for having the most shares of different companies, which encourages you to build faster in this game. Very simple, extra points. Love both these maps combined. They're my second favorite thing in Ticket to Ride. So what's my favorite? Well, I've already mentioned it earlier on, and that's Ticket to Ride Marklin. Now, Ticket to Ride Marklin is fairly divisive. It's not a lot of people's favorite maps. Like Z Garcia here at Dice Tower, he does not like this one nearly as much as I do. I like Ticket to Marklin for a couple things. The aesthetics of it are fantastic. It uses the Marklin train line. Every card in the, the train deck looks different. They're really cool. But... Secondly, there's passengers on the board now, and there are different tokens in the different areas, and you can put a passenger down and move it from one spot to another. You can move it on your own line, and you can use special passenger cards to move it on other people's lines, and when you do so, you get the points, and it's a very much a game of chicken. I want these points. The more I move through, the more tokens I'll get, but if I wait till later on, the higher point tokens will be gone, but if I go too early, 
I only get a few tokens. And so you're constantly in this, ooh, who's going to go first? Who's going to go first to move the passengers on the board? Meanwhile, building routes everywhere on a really cool map. So that's my favorite. All righty, well, that's all the stuff from Ticket to Ride, or most of the stuff that I played. There's a lot of it out there. Here's the thing. Almost all the Ticket to Ride stuff is great. It is one of the greatest franchises that exists in gaming. I highly recommend it. If you've never played any, definitely you want to start with the original map or maybe one of the small maps like London and New York. But there's so much good stuff out there. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite Ticket to Ride stuff is. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.